Hi everyone, this is the first of a sequence of reviews uh, taking a look at BLE modules. Uh, today's review we're looking at the Blue Duino Rev2 uh, which is made by a small China company called April Brother. Uh, it's been on the market for around about a year now, uh, I think with the original version coming out early 2014. You can currently pick this up on Tindy for around 14 US dollars. Okay, so let's take a look at the hardware. The BLE Duino, sorry, the Blue Duino is an Arduino compatible micro sized PCB uh, with a Bluetooth 4 module soldered on supporting Apple's iBeacon. So that's the Bluetooth uh, module there. The MCU used is the 8 Mega 3TU4 running at an 8 MHz clock rate. Uh, running on 3.3 volts and is supported by the Arduino IDE from version 106 onwards. It has breakout headers on both sides of the board which pull out 18 of the most used GPIOs from the Atmega, namely I2C, SPI buses, serial, pulse width modulation and analog GPIOs. There's also an onboard reset button just here and a power LED for, this, for letting you know that there's power to the board. So really everything's covered from the Arduino side. Uh, power is supplied from the micro USB port with the micro chip MIC5219 regulator on board, stepping the voltage down to 3.3 volts. Alternatively, there are three other ways to get power to it. Firstly, you can power it from the raw pin uh, with a source of up to 12 uh, volts, which will be regulated down to 3.3 volts. Be mindful though that the regulator requires at least one volt over the, uh, the output voltage, so you can't go below 4.3 volts. Uh, secondly, if you have a clean 3.3 volt supply, uh, you can of course power it by the VCC pin. Uh, thirdly, April Brother also sell an add-on board for an additional four, four US dollars, I think, um, from Tindy that fits both the Blue Duino and their other product called the Cactus Micro. This uses Linear Technologies LTC4054 battery management chip which allows the Blue Duino to be powered either from USB or LiPo battery without disruption. When powered from USB the LTC4054 will also charge the LiPo. Uh, in this example you'll see that uh, how the LiPo battery charger actually solders on. It'll solder directly onto the uh, top uh, via header pins. Now the BLE module. Uh, the BLE module used is based on TI's CC2540, which is a fairly solid BLE module that's been around for some time. It's accessible from the Atmega from the Serial 1 port. April Brother has provided their own zero beacon firmware which allows configuration of the module using AT style commands. There are a number of commands which control iBeacon advertising rates, setting the iBeacon name, PUID, major and minor numbers, querying and setting power levels, board rate, and also puts the module into either peripheral or central role and scanning and connecting to other BLE modules. So it really has it all covered. The module and firmware is the same as used on April Brothers other products like the Apple Shield, Zero Beacon 301, and the PI305 for the Raspberry Pi. From the software side, April Brother provides a simple Arduino library uh, that you can control the BLE module with all the control of that module being driven by AT commands. So the Arduino library essentially is just a wrapper around basic read-write commands to the, to the serial one port of the Arduino. There's also an SDK for both the iOS and Android platforms that allows a fairly quick development of your application or you could simply just roll your own uh, as a BLE module conforms to the iBeacon standard well. Integrating the SDK into your application is trivial enough, although I only tested this on the iOS platform. There are also a number of examples provided for you to use and they have a short tutorial on instructables for creating an iBeacon humidity sensor. The BLE firmware can be updated and I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't replace it with your own, but I haven't actually tested this yet. The current Zero, zero Beacon firmware is at version 2.1. From my initial testing, the Blue Duino performed really well. I was able to set up an iBeacon, download their demo app from the Apple Store, and have it working straight away. 
Developing a solid BLE based application is fairly quick and easy. However, there is a significant lack of documentation. So be prepared to dig around in examples for fine tuning your application. Uh, when using the LiPo add-on board and a 150 milliamp battery, I was able to run the Blue Duino for up to three hours whilst fetching IMU data from the I2C bus and streaming this to an iPhone at 10 samples per second. So there's a decent amount of time without any power optimization code at all. There were a few hiccups during testing. Very occasionally, the BLE module would lock up and this seemed to be due in part to the amount of data streaming through the BLE module. Too fast and a lock up solid forcing a reboot. Also, out of the four modules I purchased, two had issues. One BLE module was dead on arrival and another BLE module locked up after a week of testing and never recovered. Also, there is no way to control the BLE module when a device is connected. When you issue any AT command at all to the device, it will be disconnected straight away. This means that you don't have any fine grained control during an in-flight application for the BLE module. So in summary, the pros really for 14 US dollars with the addition of the $4 uh, US dollar LiPo battery charger, the Blue Juno is probably the cheapest out of the box BLE solution you can get. Uh, the low clock rate of the Atmega U4 allows for a longer battery life compared to other BLE modules. Cons. Depending on your application, you may find the AT command method of control of the BLE module sort of cumbersome and not much use to you. The high data rate uh, lockup is a concern. However, I am currently speaking to April Brother to get to the bottom of the issue and will provide an update later. So the question is, would I buy it again? It really depends on my application. If I wanted a cheap, reliable, low data rate device that could run on battery power for days, then yes. If my application is looking like needing a faster MCU or faster data rate, then I'd look elsewhere. If my application requires dynamic changes to the BLE module whilst devices are connected, then forget the Blue Duino. Other modules such as the new Simbly allow for dynamic changes to the BLE module during connections. Hope you enjoyed that review. Next time we're going to be taking a look at the Simbly BLE module which is a fairly new module on the market. Until then, see you later.